activists marching on Wednesday during a protest in Washington against the president's latest travel ban, which has now been blocked by two judges. Drew Anger RGT images President Trump's ban on people from a handful of countries entering the United States, though worded as a national security measure, appears to be a veiled, unconstitutional bid to bar Muslims based on their religion. A federal judge in Maryland ruled on Wednesday in an order that cited the president's own words at length. The order was the second in two days blocking the travel ban, which was set to go into effect on Wednesday. A judge in Hawaii on Tuesday ruled against the president's action, and another challenge is pending in Washington state. The Trump administration said it would appeal the rulings. Judge Derek K. Watson, in federal district court in Honolulu, ruled that opponents of the ban were likely to succeed in arguing that it violated federal immigration statutes, and issued a temporary restraining order against the administration pending a hearing on whether to grant a permanent injunction. In federal district court, in Greenbelt, M.D., Judge Theodore D. Chuang raised the stakes, finding that the president's ban was suspect on both statutory and constitutional grounds, and granting an injunction for an indefinite period of time. It's significant that the two judges who examined it found that the ban violated the law in several ways, which gives the appellate courts and ultimately the Supreme Court more options for striking it down, said Becca Heller, director of the International Refugee Assistance Project, one of the plaintiffs in the Maryland case. The district judges, both appointed by President Barack Obama, had ruled against an earlier attempt at a travel ban, as had the federal appellate courts for their regions of the country, and the appeals were consolidated and taken up by the Supreme Court, which allowed some parts of the ban to go into effect, pending consideration of the case. That became moot after Mr. Trump issued a revised ban last month. The new version was the one blocked by the two judges this week, and with the same issues still in play, the High Court appears likely to consider the matter again. In response to Wednesday's ruling, a Justice Department spokesman, Ian Pryor, referred to his statement the day before today's ruling is incorrect, fails to properly respect the separation of powers, and has the potential to cause serious negative consequences for our national security. The cases have presented the rare spectacle of a president's own words undercutting the legal arguments of his administration. The government's position is that the latest ban, like those before it, is not an attempt to prevent Muslims from entering the United States, but a bid to limit and control who enters from some of the world's most dangerous countries. Judge Chuang quoted extensively from Mr. Trump's statements and Twitter messages during the campaign and in office, including his demand as a candidate for a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the United States, his calls for a Muslim ban, and a remark that because his statements had upset some people, he was talking territory instead of Muslim. The Trump administration has insisted that the travel bans were motivated by security concerns, not religious animus, but courts have found otherwise. The most recent version of a ban, the third one issued by the president, differs from the previous ones, but not enough to make the case that the motive behind it has changed, Judge Chuang found. To the extent that the government might have provided additional evidence to establish that national security is now the primary purpose for the travel ban, it has not done so, he wrote. In January, Mr. Trump signed an executive order barring entry to the United States for 90 days by people from Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia and Yemen, whose populations are overwhelmingly Muslim, and said that in admitting people from those countries in the future, his administration would give preference to Christians. The president said the measure targeted countries that are havens for terrorists and was needed to keep violent extremists out of the United States. We want to ensure that we are not admitting into our country the very threats our soldiers are fighting overseas, Mr. Trump said. After courts blocked the order from taking effect, he issued a revised order in March, this time excluding Iraq. But that, too, ran afoul of the courts. The administration then took what it said was a new approach basing travel restrictions on a global assessment of how well other countries share information about would-be travelers with the United States no preference would be given to Christians. The resulting third travel ban was open-ended, rather than lasting 90 days. Mr. Trump once again named Iran, Libya, Syria, Yemen and Somalia, and added Chad, which is majority Muslim, and North Korea, which has very few Muslims but also very few visitors to the United States. His order barred immigration indefinitely by citizens of those countries, and by certain Venezuelan government officials and their family members. 
It also limited, by varying degrees, visits by non-immigrants such as tourists and students from those countries and from Iraq. Judge Chuang wrote that the plaintiffs were likely to succeed at trial in arguing that the order violated the First Amendment's prohibition on the government favoring or disfavoring any religion. Like Judge Watson in Hawaii, he also found it likely that the order violated a 1965 federal law that bars discrimination based on national origin and immigration. Additionally, Judge Watson ruled that the order appeared to overstep the president's authority under another section of federal immigration law. A version of this article appears in print on October 19, 2017, on page A19 of the New York edition with the headline Second Federal Judge Blocks the Third Revision of the Travel Ban.